Then we have half of the y compris donc
for the picture, for the voice. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Sit there, there, there. French center of Acitech, c'est une enfance Acitech, je pense. And um, I, so I didn't uh, make much work because uh, I'm not uh, the speaker, I'm just a coordinator. Um, so uh, welcome in the name of our three centers of Acitech, France, Italy, and Spain. Confronting the present, we felt that it was a good time to address the topic of migration. To be honest, I could say the topic of the crisis of migration, as we share the opinion that migration it itself is something very ordinary, just a phenomenon that has always accompanied humanity as well as many other spaces. Personally, I am a son, a grandson, and a grand-grandson of refugees, and yet a true French citizen, and even the purest expression of a Parisian you can find in this assembly, a Parisian from the right bank. I am not taking of your time to expose my private life. I am, re I am referring to the fact that in every TYA project about migration or aimed to migrant children and families, we have heard of during the time we prepared this meeting the point of view of the citizen is inseparable of the point of view of the professional. To say the word, it is political theater. Actually, this is no news. In The Children of Heracles, a play from Euripides written in the fifth century before our time, the citizens of Athens discuss about whether they must respect the sacred vows of hospitality of the city by hosting and protecting the children of the dead hero, Heracles, or to engage in a, war, in a war with the king of the mighty Argos. The current, the current crisis is changing our definitions of the status granted to children in European society. The tragedy in the Mediterranean, the indifference of, of states, the xenophobic outbreak across Europe do not spare children. Quite the contrary. The notions on, of inviolability of their person or unconditional protection for them are challenged by the fact. Violations of their fundamental rights are becoming commonplace. And it works. More and more young audience artists in Europe are taking the situation into account in their dramatic work, depicting displaced children broken family ties, violent control transitions, and lives to be rebuilt. In doing so, they offer audience new pers perspectives on the fury of the world and call on us to change our per perspectives. Other work, others work with the people concerned, playing for them or offering them the opportunity to participate in, artist in artistic activities. 
the TYA performance is then perceived as a place of meeting and integration into the city, intent for an audience of marginalized children and adults. What we want to do here is to present particularly significant work from European professionals. I didn't say European works because uh, it, has, it has been obvious during the exchanges we had, uh, everyone had their own specific responses and goals, depending on the national context and the available resources. We hope that our testimonies will allow a first exchange that is all the more precious um, and stimulating as Estesh artistic gathering bring together a much global community. There are initiatives everywhere in Europe, and I could mention the inspiring works of many companies and theaters in Scandinavia, in Germany, in the Balkans, or people playing for the children and families in Malta, in Lampedusa, in the refugees camp in Lebanon or in France. Of course, it is an open list and uh, a part of the discussion we will uh, have after the presentations is about what is the next steps, how do we gather all the energies and, and share all the experience across the world. You already met uh, Jaume Bello from Spain. He is an artist responsible for the social department at the School of Drama in Lleida. In the plural performance action you took part in, he addresses emotion. What does it feel when you can't communicate with the people around you? Annabelle's work, Annabelle Sergent, are rooted in images. Images are extremely powerful markers of migration in the social space, including in the life of children, and they tend to invade all the mental, the mental space. Like an engineer, Annabelle develops dramaturgy through making the best of a whole, of, of a whole set of resources, networks, and tools. Where there was only emotion, she builds theater. The works of Isabelle, Isabelle Erwet, are the expression of her humanism in the spirit of the Greek European tradition. As she says, it is all about issuing images from a relationship between two human beings, here duets composed by an adult and a child, whatever their position regarding immigration. This approach involves keeping daily life and its security at a distance, for instance, by going south and by leaving France to work with people from Lebanon and Egypt. Barbara Pizzo is the vice president of Acitej Italia and a cultural consultant. The work she proposes is the result of the reflection, mobilization, and finally the process of a role, role national center, Acitej Italia, taking action in front of the non so specific nowadays political situation in Italy. Now I give the floor to, um, to Isabelle. To Annabelle, sorry. So, <coughs> hello. I'm doing it uh, very respect speaking English, so uh, excuse me uh, for commencer. <laughs> <laughs> so hello, my name is Annabelle Sergent. I'm a writer, director, and actress. I run the Loba Company in Angers, Maine-et-Loire, France, Europe, world. This is my passport. I've rarely, rarely crossed border because my shows are written in French. And because when I was a child, nobody taught me the pleasure of traveling. I had to learn it by myself. And I like that. 
to move, to open my eyes to new landscape, to understand different country. The test of elsewhere and the test of other. I'm lucky. My French passport make me an elastic traveler. I can return to my starting point, a priori without any obstruction, without any worry. And I write shy like because it's a place you never really leave. Marguerite Duras, a French writer, used to say, there is always something of childhood, always. And then, in 15, in France, there are terrorist attacks. The victim, the state of emergency, the tension state lead in the war country. What are the children going to do with Evan? How can I explain to my children what's happened? How the children integrate this event to bind themselves as adults? 15. In Syria, we heard a lot about Raqqa. The terrorist group Daesh has, has, has installed its caliph with all the violence that we know by arming the children of Raqqa, who then became child soldiers, cannon fodder. We could see photographs and reports circulating on the net. So, I've decided to create a play about war and exile, and to try to draw an outline addresses addressed to the youth. What do children dream about in war time? This is the subject of this creation. To speak of the exile and the war of others without including the Western point of view seems to me indecent. The France is the first, the, the fifth, 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 or three, or three, fifth. fifth. For, um, selling arms, uh, so for that we can't get out of history. So in each show, the story includes a French character. The theater is an at attempt of the symbolic reparation. For this, we must include ourselves as subject, separating the tree, reading a human story which politics do don't currently allowed today. Offering the spectator the ability to look at the real and to open new door, space to sing, opening possibility. To show for young people and teenagers are created. Weinak, where are you? In Arabic, the story of Naji, an isolated foreign miner who find himself on the French land, and shell shock, the story of a woman, journalist, war reporter. I'm going to talk about Wenak today, and we want to show you the teaser. Son pays était vert. Il est devenu gris, gris poussière. Imagine, un ciel qui n'est plus rempli que par des nuages de poussière. Que ce n'est plus de l'eau qu'il pleut, mais de la poussière. Tu imagines une rivière de poussière Comment on nage dans une rivière comme ça la guerre, ça ajoute de la poussière à la poussière. Ça rend toutes les peaux grises et vieilles. Et puis ça fait mourir les gens très prématurément. Je lui ai souvent demandé de me la raconter son histoire. Il me l'a raconté. Par petits bouts. Désordonnés. So Wainak um, 
is a story of uh, Lily and Naji, two teenagers that everything separated, meet uh, one day by chance thanks to a bus ticket. Bus ticket is a little passport in a city. She was born on a French land and him in a country at war. He arrived in France as an exotic foreign minor, always hugged to his mobile phone. He sent text message to find his little sister, Laya, lost on the road to exile during the crossing of the Mediterranean Sea. He asked to keep a promise made to his grandmother, Mama, who stay in the country. He had to phone Mama to tell her that he and Laya are safe on, are safe on the French land. As long as Naji had not found Laya, he can't call his grandmother Mama, and he is then exiled both from this country, but also from his promise. Lily brings him back to the present time by her simple presence, luminous and clumsy. One day, Naji receives receive a call from Italy. Laya is alive in a camp for refugees. He left Lily very quickly to find his sister, leaving her, Lily, with her question, her dream, and her hope. I have Catherine Verlaghi to work with me on the writing Waynak, partners to guide us on creation. We had residencies of writing in two different classes, Reims and Champigny, and we met children and youth during one school year a few days by month. So, we go to Reims. These students are newcomers in a secondary school in Reims. They learn French. They come from different countries. About a third of them fled their country, Eritrea, Syria, Sudan, Iraq. Others arrive from Pakistan, Spain, Italy, Algeria, Florida, Equatorial Guinea, Romania, Turkey, Bulgaria, Cameroon. Imagine the difficulty to meet when you don't speak the same language. It is a little here, except that I have the time to write my text and I have it translated into English. So we decide with the teacher to use Google Translate. It's a little epic with computer in the classroom and keyboard in Urdu, different Arab, Moroccan, Syro Lebanese, Iraq. Oh. You will tell me that the translation is very approximative with Google Translate. And yes, but it's precisely that. It gives us the opportunity with the young people to go back and forth in the language to try to understand us, travel in the language. During one school year, we meet them, organize writing workshop, listen to music, and Wainak reading. When I came back to the hotel at night, I wondered what this meeting brought me. Too much empathy or too much distance? It's always two. Because their story is amazing for some, and they have at the same time an incredible life force, a desire to allow, to share, to meet. So, get out sentimentalism and enter in the language was the solution to meeting. We've tried to remain delicate in your work with these young people because it's not a question of factoring their story, of collecting them. I will speak here rather immersion, immersion, immersion. Travel in language get us us during one whole year, creating between these young people a network of solidarity translation. Asma translate into Syrian Arabic, taken by Salma who translate from Moroccan Arabic to Iraqi Arabic, some translate to English from Turkish. In short, it was the tower bubble under my eyes. 
exulted and they loved me. A day, we read their first writing and wake up. We were certain to read even the Iraqian Yusuf, who speaks very little French. He said three words. Yes, he was happy. A very strong moment in front of 2,000 adolescents admiring spectators. An Eritrean girl, uh, and, and she has an incredible story. Um, and she is a beautiful person. She, and she says, I was able to cross my first text written in Eritrean. And to say it in, in French allowed me to cross the image without being so magic, to travel in the language. At this moment, I understood that the exile is from his country, but also and especially from his mother language. Where do we sing from? Where do we dream from? How do the experience of exile and the turning away of the language come to change our inscription in the world? I believe that with poetry, we can reconstruct something. Working on the exile without asking the question of the loss of the mother, mother language would have been a misinterpretation. When I was first written in French, all, all the text, but as we, we, we uh, said, we made all in the French text and asked a linguist to translate into Syrian Lebanese Arabic all parts where Naji intimacy occurs. French is written from left to right, Arabic from right to left, a symbol of unity. We work in video that we call ghost world word that will be floating presence, bottle of the sea. Four ghost words, sister, Mediterranean sea, wake up, a phone number. They represent the absence of other. But what about the French point of view? So we travel in Champlain. They are Champignons. They live in a small village called Champigny, not far from Angers. With Catherine Valraguet, the co-author of Wenac, when we were not in the class of France, we were in that of Champigny. We researched with them to work on their description of war and exile. It soon became clear that for them the war was the attack we had just suffered in France. So of course the myth, the meeting was less exotic, less sentimental, because our story, our culture, had something similar. And this is where it became interesting to ask the following question, must we be so different for human meetings to exist? Are lives worth more than other depending on what we have lived? From our writing workshop with them, imagine the scene of power in Wenak, which raised the question of the difficulty of the positioning versus whether or not to welcome an exile at all. Do you remember your, your father's face when you saw me in the living room that night? And my mother? We cannot keep him here. And why not? Because, because it's not legal, we cannot. 
it's legal to put it back in the street? Unfortunately, yes. And it's human, human, do you think? Do you want me to do that? And what are you going to do with him, huh? What will he do all day when we are at work and Lily is going to school? I don't know. He's going to rob us. It is out of the question that he stays alone at home. We do not know him. You don't help me. Yes, I help you. I help us. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's ideal or it's easy, but I'm realistic. We were able, little to little, with the help of teacher, to talk about the image that students were watching on television, migrants coming into the European space, and also talk about their feeling, what was said at home or not. The same we, we read of the, the world of children, world for world. So we can imagine that we mm, tell in the home. Mm. <coughs> so one month, one month before the creation of Renac, we needed war image in the show. At the moment, Lily stole Naji Mobile's phone and look in it like a Pandora box. We received 150 drawings by this school. And it was possible because we have worked a lot of time with them. So, So this meeting with the student of Champigny or Reims required a lot of delicacy, openness, adjustment. It became clear to us that we must do in the reality what Wenak tell. A meeting that changed the trajectory of your life. In the absence of being able to see each other physically, Reims and Champigny, these young people from Reims and Champigny have become pen friends, exchange of postcards, life story, photo in the reality. So how to deal with the war on the set? Mm, this is the scene of Renac, the scene of Renac, Naji and Lily enroll themselves in a happy football game. But Naji's memory explodes. Lily continued to stand by her side despite the shock, even she don't all understand. So it's brotherhood. We'll skip the football, please. Yes. <laughs> so, mm. your task as creator is not to put 
of bailing on the reality. We can stash difficult, fragile, overwhelming things, but there we must be to use a light at the end, a possibility, a hope, some poetry. So I would like to finish this talk by appointing journalists who have Fade Wenax work. So this drawing is made by a journalist, Elisa Periger, a French journalist. She writes articles for AFP or other French newspaper, Mediapart, Le Monde, etc. Uh, she passed um, a lot of time in Greece, uh, Italy, um, and other pays, uh, Calais, etc. She won the Louise Weiss Award Prize for her work on migrants. Elisa Periger, like other journalists, say that it's not a migrant crisis, but a crisis in the host country. <coughs> Elisa drew to better reflect the reality of refugees and migrants. Here are some of his drawings that inspired Renac. So this is, uh, here is my passport. My name, uh, um, <laughs> our friend told the truth. I am Isabel Ergoet. But what is not indicated on my passport is that I am an actress, a director, and a painter. With uh, Paolo Cardona, an Italian artist living in France, I lead an independent company for 21 years called Scapa e Associates. Scapa means, uh, in Italian, uh, uh, go and associated. We create shows, performances, installations, workshops in all types of places for a mixed audience of children and adults. Our conviction, shared by all of us, I'm sure, you're there, is that art is one of the mediums of, for the freedom to think for oneself, a tool to become a subject of one's existence, that it must be offered to all. For two years, I have been working and still working on shows in Marseille, France, Cairo, Egypt, and Ramana, Lebanon, with artists and children, French, Egyptian, Lebanese, and Palestinian from Syria living in Lebanon. These are duets with an adult and a child called um, mirror duets. The Egyptian duo is called the weaker of the two. The Lebanese will be called species or how to be outside without getting lost. The French was called the courage of the birds. I am here to tell about my travels from the north to the towers of the Mediterranean Sea and back home. I am here to tell about all the travels from France to Egypt, from Egypt to France, from France to Lebanon, from Egypt to Lebanon, from Lebanon to France. I am here also to tell about the incredible journey of artistic sharing with children and artists from another culture. What do we see in this picture? Children and an adult in a forest. They seem to, to sleep, but in fact they are dancing. In general, when I specify where the picture was taken in Lebanon, I can see in the eyes of my interlocutors 
all a lot of images about the civil war in Lebanon. If I add that the children are Palestinian refugees from Syria living in a camp in Beirut, of course, a stream of other images arrive. It is normal. We see these images for so many years. They are in us, in our mind, in our body. But what made us choose these children is that they are children first. Children with skills, curious, hospitable, hardworking. Of course, their personality is built over the joy and dramas they, through, they go through. And it's with all that that they are present on stage, that they leave the relationship with the adult with whom they play and dance. But it seems to me that we, us from Europe, must guard ourselves against the business of shame, shameful conscience that we, we have in front of what our nation has done and keep doing on the African continent and in the Middle East. This exacerbating empathy can block the perception of children and even make us, uh, um, make us make serious mistakes. In reality, we know nothing about them, what they have experienced. What we will learn will come from them, from what they will let out during the rehearsals and the moments of daily life that we will share. This will come from who they are simply. So I can say that in this picture, we can we see children and adults dancing in the forest. I present you uh, the adult Aurelien Zoukri, the adult of the Lebanese Bureau, and one of the teenagers is Omar Bakir, uh, the teenager of the Bureau. Ah, no, now it's higher. Ah, yeah. Um, my research goes through three places, the garden, the house, and the paradise. Linking the house with the garden and the paradise is a stimulation to imagine life in a place that one would consider as habitable, um, livable, and which would be transformed with the seasons, the displacements, the needs, but also at random of the voluntary or involuntary errors of its inhabitants. I call it gardening together. Dwelling is existing, but it is also to occupy a place to stay sustainably, sustainably yes, with, the uh, with the time it takes for it to grow, that it dies, that it decomposes, that it regrows here or there. The gestures of gardening, improvising, playing a show, painting are actions that, that can be done everywhere and by everyone. They share the garden's body. The body is both the tool and the subject of this work. It is what who tells. I present you the Egyptian bureau. Mohammed Shafiq, the tallest one, and Mohammed Khoued, the child. To write a show with a child as an adult is to write from a self that is perpetuated in the history of humanity. Even in a known place, in a known identity, it is what is there and who lives. It is universal. Children, artists on stage, lead us to the essence of the relationship, and because, because they are children, place the collective research on the ground of intimacy and politics. In the course of this work, we must, without even setting one, play with all the images, including cliché, which arise when an adult and a child are together, a man and his son, two brothers, the child who recognizes himself as an adult, the adult who recognizes himself as a, as a child. In the same way, we do not circumvent the contradiction, for example, uh, the violence which this relationship sometimes can contain. We approach it from what we observe, 
and experience every day. We approach it from who we are, made of our pathways of children and adults. At the weather affected plants, the story of each person makes the body grow and develop in a singular way. The duos are mirror between the adult and the child, between the performers and the rest of the artistic team, between the stage and the audience, between two cultures. The chair. You can see it, huh? <laughs> uh, this chair was found in a Lebanese flea market. It is a typical, old, common Lebanese chair. For me, it is a French chair. We have the same. In France, they are called uh, chaise bistro. For a young Palestinian from Syria who lives in Lebanon, this chair is typically Syrian. There was the same at his grandmother's house in Syria. This is how, a little example, how an object as simple as a chair can become a rich medium for writing a multicultural narration. My subject of exploration also concerns the Egyptian and Lebanese societies. There are people there who think and act in the fields of art, architecture, gardening, education, because it is perhaps the only way to move towards a world, a world livable. What pins us so strongly is the attention we pay to children. Thinking of the world from and for children is like thinking of a world that is livable for everyone. I found in these countries an urgency to create. This creative force, lived with joy in spite of everything, comes like an arrow to touch mine. It's clear, if I go there, it's because something looking at me, and because as an artist I need to be there to go forward and to talk differently about what we have inside and what we live. Uh, this picture is uh, called, uh, um, I'm learning Arabic. It's an imaginary Arabic writing composed with agai that I found on a beach on the north coast in France. I don't speak Arabic. I went for the first time to Egypt and Lebanon to play Uccellini, a show of painting, <coughs> song and movement that is open to all audiences from ex monk I play Uccellini for 20 years now. In uh, 2014, I was invited to Cairo by the Akaway Festival. It was, even if I had uh, really good friends, brothers from the African continent and from Middle East, it was the first time I set foot on the continent. In 2015, after a tour in China that I was also discovering for the first time, I traveled in Lebanon for a series of performances and workshops organized by the French Institute of the Lebanon. Tour during which I met the people and the work of Caraba Collective and Aurelien Zouki that you saw in the picture in the forest with the children. Conversations with the public questioned me revealed, revealed new fields of perception. I returned to Cairo on my own. I had to go back there. The passport you saw, as Annabelle told you before, allows me to travel with a lot of freedom. I'm lucky. I don't need a visa to go to Lebanon, and when I'm arriving in Cairo, I have to pay my visa, and it's okay. In Lebanon, when they ask me, uh, why are you coming to Lebanon? I just answer, I'm going to meet friends, and it's okay, I go. Welcome. I went back to Egypt many times. Each time I was welcomed. It is the people who opened the doors of a country. I like the sensation, the reality that, that is both pleasant and uncomfortable, to understand nothing or almost nothing, to feel a foreigner and at the same time as at home. One loves a lot, a lot. it gives artistic ideas modifies the way of thinking, it gives forces for what is fundamental for oneself, 
in an artistic approach that is inked in life. And it is thanks to several stays with no real project other than the meeting and the discovery that I became the first, first artist hosted in, the, in residence at the French Lycée in Cairo. This is my home in uh, French Lycée. I had a workshop with uh, students, but during my residency, I invited Olivier Guignard, a French visual artist, and Shaima Shoukri, Egyptian dancer and choreographer. And Shaima invited Mohamed Shafi, dancer, choreographer, and musician. The big one you saw, the tall one you saw in the picture. For six days, we improvised together dance, painting, music, video. And it is because we practiced together that Mohamed Shafiq became the adult of the Egyptian duo as the composer of the music of the show, and Olivier Guignard, the artist images of the team. Um, if I explain to you how the meeting with the artist of the duo occurred, it is that it seems to me really important to insist that all this is not born from a call for projects which would have had to comply uh, and would have by necessity directed the composition of our group. It is by following a path of, of vagrancy with the Egyptians and with the Lebanese that the growing of a project in collaboration took shape. Um, I, for, I mean, working outside, it's uh, outside of Europe or outside of our country, is not easy, uh, concretely not easy. Uh, in that way, uh, it's more simple really to stay at home. But I had the chance, I had the chance to work with our producer manager, and because she has a long experience of collaborative project with structure like NGO schools, and with artists uh, on the, the African continent or in Asia, South, South America. And it is because we share our professional skills that these duets can emerge. And now I change, uh, yes, because it's not easy to build this kind of, uh, to find the money to organize and to, to be really open. I met the children in schools uh, they are led by uh, NGO. In Cairo, it, it's a double harma that welcome 150, 150 children from a poor area. And in Beirut, it's uh, in a one hand puppet that welcome 15 children, Palestinian of Syria, living in a Palestinian camp. And they mixed boys and girls. Um, those schools give children the opportunity to have a life, a job, other than those to which they are predestinated with regret, rega, regards to the environment, traditions, and culture, and culture from which they come. And those schools are the interface between us and the family. The landscape that these encounters can grow, that they can produce as artistic forms, can only arise from a pooling of our context, respectively, with our partners, partners, uh, the schools, or with artists. It is much simpler to stay at home, as I told you, <laughs> that way. This contained, co constraint and the strong contradiction it contains in the perspective, respective perception of the means or condition, conditions available to the other for living bring us back to something essential and an economy of means to say what beans. What this kind of collaboration requires is the absolutely necessary time for the two parties to explain and listen, the incompressible time required for approaching another thought, for another way of working. Uh, without this time, no agreement can be found. Um, there are organizations in all countries that help for mobility, but the French network abroad are not so operational if the exchanges 
do not go in the direction of the policy of France at that moment. We meet today many difficulties to bring in Europe artists from, from countries whose stability is fragile. And this can create fears or tension when we have to choose the artist. Children in all circumstances, even those extremely dramatic, have the ab ability to make chaos a livable place at the time of their game. Their curiosity, which some call childish curiosity, is actually a life drive that we have to feed through, through our lives. This has no age. And there, the child is obviously not the weakest of us. It is on the basis of mutual trust that the word living for the duo is born and written on stage. The stage is their garden, their paradise, the time of the performance. Showing bodies that grounded in their history, showing them fi finding an agreement is the place of my commitment. The artistic creation, carnal and intuitive, is the refusal of the dismemberment of the bodies and of the world. To join what Annabelle has just said, it is also a powerful way not to let images of the destruction of bodies take possession of ours and prevent us from being. The experience of otherness, the meeting with a child or the one with another culture, seems to me the only way to resist to the fear that grows around. The artistic exchange creates a lively place from which to face fear and prejudices. Mine, those of others, those of a professional environment, those of a nation, a continent. Touch, to touch, to be touched. This is perhaps the paradise to dare to say together. We propose a, a 10 minutes coffee break for everybody to chill down. Thank you. 